I started to lay out and put together this little power supply I'm designing. I shouldn't use the word designing. I'm building. Assembling. And the first thing I did was, and I've done half of them, but I've removed these little standoffs. They're, uh, I don't know what the spacing is, but it's normally metric and and they stand a little bit proud of the base. I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. And they have holes formed in them. They don't go the whole way through. And the whole pattern is such that uh, they're not usable to me. So what I did in order to remove them, and you see they're gone, they're flush, was just take a half inch drill bit. You can do it by hand, but a press is much nicer. And I just sat on one of these and, and drilled it out. I was careful not to poke a hole through the case. Quick and dirty, and this will give me a perfectly flat mounting base and the little will have no projections into it or protrusions. I've completed both halves, the top and the bottom of the case. Now I anticipate using these two transformers and I'm going to connect the secondaries in parallel. I think I said earlier uh, they'd be connected in series. And I've decided to put these big bulky black wires towards the front because if I mount it the other way, you see it, it moves the transformer that, that far ahead. And frankly, I don't have enough, I'm worried about room. So what I anticipate doing is mounting these transformers sort of like this. And now at least the, the room I would have lost had I reversed them would be... Uh, I, it, it's the same under here as, as either mounting position. However, I guess we could we could do something like that, but it makes these screws inaccessible. So I'm, I'm going to stick with, and maybe I wish I had done it differently later on. These screws become accessible by removing the back plate. And just for no good reason, I put a little bit of space between the transformers. I finished drilling and chamfering these holes. Uh, and the mounting holes for the uh, transformers. And I chamfered them top and bottom so I don't worry about plastic drilled holes. It's it, there's usually not enough to cut you, but the air holes need to be as smooth on the inside and outside and flared as it can be. We don't have a lot of driving force to get this air in and out of the case, and I'm going to try. Now I can tell whether it's going to happen pretty quickly. To mount these transformers up on little standoffs, I can't see it. On little formed by putting the nuts on the bottom, then putting another set on top of the transformer. So I'll, I'll put this transformer in place and we'll try to fit the lid on. And it, it doesn't. See, I, I can't close the lid. You know, it, it, that's how close the lid is. I can't quite close it. So I guess I'll, I'll have to mount the transformer base tight against the plastic.
I could have drilled more ventilation holes. In fact, maybe I should have drilled more ventilation holes. We do have this vent which came integral to the case. And I wouldn't give a lot of thought about weakening the case in this area. Actually bolting these transformers firmly down stiffens the case rather than weakens it. So the holes weaken the case or maybe they weaken the case. But once the transformer is fastened down, I think the case will stiffen right back up. So here we are with the transformers mounted. And although I can feel the case touching the transformers, it closes just fine. I'll show you that here. See, there's now there's literally zero clearance at the top. I mean, they're right there. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do. is what I would say phase these transformers. Now there's green wire in each transformer and that goes to an intermediate shield between the windings. It does not go to the case. I just put them out of the way for the time being. You can see that the primary wires are black and unmarked. They do come out holes left and right here, but that may or may not mean anything. Well, the secondary terminals are just vertically mounted screws. My intention is to take a piece of wire and connect these in parallel. I picked the wrong pointer. <laughs> Try a shorter pointer. Connect these in parallel. But if this were a DC supply and you wanted to put it in parallel to, if you wanted to parallel two DC supplies, you would connect positive to positive and negative to negative and you're pretty well okay. There's some other caveats, but for the most part that would be just fine. And what you do in a parallel connection of DC power supplies, batteries, or transformers, uh, you've, if the transformer is identical, you've essentially doubled the available current. Each one of these transformers makes about 1.6 amps. They're uh, 24 volt 40 VA. So with them in parallel, I should get I should have the ability at least to draw three amps combined. However, depending on how these transformer leads are paralleled, so you could be paralleled that way, or could swap this for this. Now that was a bit of magic but now we we're, we have different parallel leads we don't have the same leads connected in parallel with the bottom screws uh, with the bottom two terminals of the secondary connected what can happen is the voltage on these two terminals can act like a seesaw and go up and down and up and down. If these secondaries are in phase, the voltage on here will just rise and fall for each cycle. Well, in the United States, there's 60 cycles a second or 60 hertz. 
and of course the time period represented by 60 hertz half of it is spent in the positive direction and half is spent in the negative direction what we want to do is have both of these terminals go up and down at the same time that means the voltage between these terminals should be zero if they're phased such that the voltage seesaws now of course it's all reference to these terminals down here but if this is out of phase these voltages will add together because these voltages, these terminals here are tied together <laughs> they'll never be different if we put a wire between them so these voltages will end up adding together and we'll get theoretically 48 volts well, I don't want 48 volts, I want 24 volts what I have here the transformers are energized through this IEC cable and this red indication means that I have a master switch on these cables so if this thing starts to burn I can reach over and throw the switch what I have here are these two wires connected to this Wago terminal strip and these lead to the one wire leads to each transformer here I have the other two wires one from each transformer and another power wire from the terminal strip and I have the bottom two terminals connected together with a clip lead now pay no attention to wire color here or insulation color I just happen to pick it out of the box so with the transformers powered up we'll read the voltage across this secondary and you see it reads 34 almost perfectly 35 volts now this is transformers rated at 24 volts output so the output is 11 volts high these are class 2 transformers they're inherently safe to use but that results in a fairly high temperature drop the thing gets hot it also results in horrible output regulation to get 24 volts out of these transformers you almost have to be at full load or 1.6 amps across this transformer almost the same across these two terminals what do you think well they're connected by a jumper should be zero volts <laughs> it is the question is what is going to happen now and I have a tenth of a volt in other words the voltage across these two terminals is very very small which is what I want so let me do a little color coding and I'll, I'll be right back so I took the two and I don't know which two they are I just know that these two when connected together phase these transformers correctly and I've I put some red heat shrink on them and they're not tight I'm gonna slide it up and heat shrink it okay but the the correct ones now let's see what happens if I reconfigure this incorrectly here we are with one black and one red wire on this terminal and one black and one red wire on this terminal now when you swap them make sure you still have one wire from each transformer going to each one of these and not two wires 
from this transformer going to this terminal and two wires from this terminal to the transformer. In any event, let's see what we read now. These are what I would consider the wrong phasing. So we still have Now we only have 33.9. My primary voltage could have changed some. And here we have 33.47. But what do we have here and here? Quick before the battery dries. 68 volts. So these secondaries with this jumper on here are connected in series or they're additive. We don't want them to be additive. So I'll take these Wagos apart, slide the red wire clear down, and shrink it. And then when I finally splice it in the case, the two red wires are going to be joined together and the two unmarked or black wires will be joined together. Now, if you haven't seen these little Wago blocks, they're pretty nice. They're quite common, I guess, in Germany and perhaps the rest of Europe for house wiring. In this country, they're very popular for replacing ballasts. I'm not sure why that is. This one, in, this one takes five wires have five holes, insert a wire, and just push down on that little clamp, and now the wire is in there. And these are actually rated, I think, over 30 amps a piece. They have a small opening here where you can reach down and do a voltage test. They're essentially fingerproof if the uh, insulation is short enough and they offer a lot of distance in here before the wire gets to the metal terminal. See about that far. In fact, this is the strip gauge. Okay, the wires are insulated back that far, or should be insulated back that far. These are especially nice for high voltage or low voltage splices on the bench. Once the wires are inserted, it can just be two wires or three wires. I can hold them. They're finger safe. I don't have to temporarily heat shrink the connection here. I do have a little bit of exposed conductor here. But that's my fault. I left too much. I stripped the wire back too far. Very handy. These are available from Germany at about 50 cents a piece. Well, a twist on wire nut in the United States costs 5 to 15 cents a piece, depending on its capacity. And the Chinese make, I'm going to get, I have some coming in the mail, what I think is a fairly good clone of this. So I can buy them in a genuine, I think it's genuine, uh, Wago box with the, all the markings on them, strip gauge. Uh, the Chinese ones, I think, don't are not as marked as well. Don't have the listings, but we all know the Chinese could produce the listings. Very nice to have a few of these laying around for temporary connections on the bench. So now we have these transformers phased, I can uh, heat shrink the tubing and sort of forget them for a while. The next step in the construction of this project will be the assembly of the power supply regulator board. All of this costs around 9 or $10 free delivery. Uh, all the parts are here. 
there's two additional parts and and that's to remotely mount the potentiometers the sockets to remotely mount are here as well included are two 10 turn I'm sorry two 10k potentiometers which could be mounted directly to the board or here, these three holes, an adjacent three holes, can be re put. A, you can install a socket here, and then remotely mount the potentiometers, which I intend to do. And then, of course, you can you can use multi-turn potentiometers. This big device here in the plastic bag is the brute force heat dissipator or at least heat generator it was intended to be mounted here here and here it's three terminal device I intend to fit this with wires and connect it remotely up from this to the heat sink which will be located in the back of the case I'm not going to do this construction on the video I've done this before on video and I've mentioned also that I'll try to provide a link. But the definitive, all-encompassing assembly, and because of other reasons, you'll see them, if you visit the Volt Log page, uh, or a page on the Volt Log channel, and I'll try to look that up and provide a link down in the comments. First class assembly, instructions and an in-depth review of the supply itself and at least an, an overview as to how it works. This power supply was not originally developed in China. It was of course like most things made in the United States. There's a considerable discussion in one or two groups about this power supply and about how the design could be improved initially, the American design, uh, the U.S. design, and then when the Chinese came out with this, how they made slight changes, how those changes affected the board and how some changes could be made to this board. I don't intend to do any of those changes. I'm just going to, we don't have any instructions, so I'm just going to follow the classic <laughs> find the part, stick it in the hole routine. So if you enjoyed this so far, this is part two, there'll be a part three, I hope. Subscribe if you can, drop me a note. Any questions, comments, or when you see me heading down a blind alley, feel free to mention it. I can use all the help you guys can provide. Thank you.